insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 58, Surviving Social Distancing. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my healthy and mostly self-quarantined co-host, Michelle Whalen. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Sorry, I had to fix my ears. I was I was looking crooked. You don't the... want crooked ears, right? I don't know. I can't tell. I guess they look okay. That's right. Maybe the camera's just crooked. Maybe the camera's crooked. That's what it is. Just lean. You'll be fine. There, uh, lean the other way. There you go. Perfect. Yeah, they're actually, they need to slide around <laughs> is what the problem is. Anyway, That's okay. uh, so this week we are, I guess, kind of under quarantine, right? For the most part, you uh, you haven't really been as much. I haven't. I've still been going <coughs> to work for the most part, but. Uh, yeah, I've been, I've been working from home since Wednesday because I, I only went in on Tuesday. Right. And Tuesday seemed to be like the last day that a lot of people in my office um we're we're there there's still a, a couple of people right now that are still working just because they don't have laptops right but basically anybody that has um a laptop is home and what's actually kind of funny was as of friday my boss who doesn't work in the same building that i work in um works in a different location who never works from home because literally he lives two minutes from the office he is now working from home as a, as a safety precaution. So well, that's convenient. Well, it must be nice working two minutes. From the I know. Office. Right. That's why I always say, I'm like, Oh, your commute is so rough. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, my commute this week has been, I don't know. It's been tough, you know, going from downstairs to upstairs. Cause I've been working. This is actually my office <laughs> during the week. So <laughs> yes, this is a studio and makeshift <laughs> office during a crisis. Right. Whereas our kitchen, <laughs> the pantry has also been, um, seventh grade, uh, <laughs> right, right. Has been middle it's, school. It's, it's been it's been ang- English language arts. It's been math. It's right. been gym like, class. Gym even class. Yeah. yeah so. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, that's the living room. The living room has been gym class for when our daughter was playing Just Dance. Right. So that was that was Thankfully, gym activity. We, we kept the wig. So <laughs> see, isn't it good we kept the wig? So anyway, you know, a lot of people are homebound right now with this crisis going on, yeah, and yeah. a lot of people are probably suffering from a severe case of cabin fever so uh, yeah. some of the um some of the things that we're going to share with you today might help you with some of that mm-hmm. cabin fever yep. Yep. um a lot of the stories we have today are related to the current crisis uh some aren't right there's, um, there's actually some there's, other news going there's on there's actually some news i think that's what, not one Myers story related. two two I think. two two, two. <laughs> We have two. And then See, I like to try and f- fill the gap with something. And yeah. then there's always our insightful picks of the week. So hopefully we'll have some some stuff that'll help sure. those folks that are homeward homeward bound. I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, ready to get started? Sure, let's do it. All right, let's get right into Disney Detective. For Disney Detective. So the other week we had a story um, that Disneyland was donating all of their unused food to local food banks in Southern California. And this week a new story came out that obviously Walt Disney World is donating food as well. Um, so Disney hotels, stores, and theme parks are shut down, and the company decided to donate all excess food that they have to Central Jersey. Uh, C- Central Jersey, yeah, come well, on. Well, <laughs> give it all to us. Nice. <laughs> Central Florida residents in need. Uh, the Walt Disney World theme parks have officially closed and until the rest, the end of this month, as of right now. And now 
now uh, the resorts have closed and um, all of the stores have closed um, in Disney Springs, anything that was Disney operated. Um, I don't I know as of the beginning of the week there were still a couple of stores that were open, but those are non Disney owned owned stores. Um, so following the, the closure, they've decided um, to work with the Second Harvest Food Bank of Central Florida. Um, they've actually been uh, working with them since 1991 to um, donate uh, excess food or unserved food from throughout Walt Disney World. So now they've obviously had a whole lot more, um, you know, to, to give to them. Uh, throughout the years, Disney Harvest Program has actually collected and distributed more than 823,000 pounds of prepared, unserved food annually. And again, as we mentioned last week, uh, Disneyland actually did something similar, um, Second Harvest Food Bank of Orange County. So it's the same company, just a different location. So good to see that, you know... Um, they're they're spreading the love, obviously. Okay. I mean, again, like you know, we mentioned this last week about you know Disney being good corporate mm-hmm. uh, neighbors and and reaching out and trying to help those in need, which is which is kind of nice. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, it does help a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, because you know, and, and that's one of the things that you know, uh, it, it's the kids. You know, it's it's families that, you know, that are now out of work that, you know, might not have, you know, savings or are still getting paid by their company, yep. you know. So this is, you know, definitely well, and something I, that's going to help, know you know, a lot of people. So. A lot of schools are continuing with their mm-hmm. their food programs, their right, meal programs right. for kids. So that helps mm-hmm. and, and this helps as well because there are a lot of people that, that unfortunately live paycheck to paycheck. Mm-hmm. Or rely on the, the schools, you know, and, and for us, our our township, um, the beginning of all of this, they were offering anybody that was on reduced or free lunches um, normally, they were able to still get their meals. And they announced on Friday that basically any student that was looking for food that needed food could actually... Um, could get it. You basically right. just have to go online, order it, and then pick it up. Um, you know, at the at the gym of the high school. So right. you know, right. now they're they're extending it to everybody because I think they're starting to see that. You know, there are shortages all over the place, and we've we've you know seen it. I I've you know been ordering groceries online for. For a while now, through our local Walmart, and now it's a <laughs> let me order, you know, twenty things and see that half of them are are out of stock, and they're yeah. you know just normal staples. And I'm not trying to to hoard anything, and we're just trying you know go week to week, and you know we haven't been able to get certain right. staples. You know, fortunately, we there we have enough food in in the refrigerator and in our pantries. It's just you know certain things that we're we're missing you right. know and we'll so make disney do. disney stepping up and actually <clears throat> donating all that food mm-hmm. is is definitely going to help a lot of people mm-hmm. absolutely so our next story is something that uh you know you can't go to disney parks at this point <laughs> right. in time but here might be a, a worthy alternative Why don't yeah you tell so, us about this one? so this was this was a, a cute little uh article uh that popped up where you know obviously Disneyland and Disney World are closed right now, but it doesn't mean that you can't experience the most magical place on Earth thanks to the Internet. Um, So a week ago, the Disney parks obviously made the decision to close. Um, But now what you can do is if you're, you know, looking for that, hey, I want to go on this ride, you can do it virtually. Um, So those, you know, even though these are not official uh, sanctioned virtual tours. These are, you know, various videos of, you know, from guests that have been on the park, uh, have been to the park and have posted their videos. Some of them are actually really good um, videos. Uh, there, there's a couple of different people that I follow on Facebook who, um, they're Florida residents and they, um, post, you know, videos of various things. So, you know, basically, Go on YouTube, or the article was on uh, HelloGiggles.com, uh, where it has a link to all of them, and some of them are from 
uh, different parks, not just Disney World, but from Disneyland. So you can see, you know, what the different rides are like, um, you know, and, and just kind of spend the day going on on different rides, you know. And <laughs> it was funny because I had posted this on uh, Facebook and a friend of mine said, so is there a four hour wait for Star Wars? I said, well, if you really want, you know, go outside in your backyard and, and walk around in a queue <laughs> to, to get the full experience of, of waiting on, on the line. So, you know, sit with your family and, and ride some, some rides. Or, like me, somebody that doesn't go on roller coasters or things like, you know, the, the, the scary grown-up rides, I could actually, you know, enjoy some of the rides, you know, this way. So, something fun to, to do with, with the family. That's kind of a cool idea. I like, I like the fact that you can, you can comfortably sit in your home and, mm -hmm. and do the rides. We've seen videos of this in the past where mm -hmm. it's walkthroughs and... And those are generally very dark and mm -hmm. they're not professionally done. These all look very professionally yeah, so, done. Yeah, some of them are really, really good. And like the the one person, I'll, I'll send a, a little shout out to, to Fat Panda. Um, his videos are, are excellent. Um, he usually spends, you know, a couple of days videotaping them, editing them, putting them together. You know, even on, you know, the dark rides, you know, you can still see. Um, you know, so it's not like somebody's there with, you know, their cell phone or, you know, an old camera or whatever trying to take video. These are really good quality, you know, and usually... What some and we're not body shaming. Fat Panda is actually the name that he Yeah, that's his by. name. He's, his just, just name's Fat record. Panda. He's, he's an awesome guy. Uh, hope to meet him someday, you know, whenever we get down there. Um, but yeah, so him along with other various people, um, you know, so something to, to pass the time you know you want to say all right today we're going to disney kids you know and spend a couple of hours you know on the couch you know go make some popcorn hay and at here's another shameless plug uh target actually was selling um mickey ice cream bars and mickey ice cream sandwiches so i i bought a pack last week so you can really experience <laughs> so it can, now we just need so the turkey leg now and then we'll just be need good to go oh i should have no oh, they didn't have any at the amish market um but yeah you you know make a turkey leg get some ice cream bar pop some popcorn there you go and you know and again if you want to experience your cue you know walk around in your living room so you're getting exercise so you're not just and sitting find on the couch. someone that can overcharge you for everything that you're going to do <laughs> and you'll be good to go and you'll be totally fine just think how much money you're saving <laughs> Yeah. So speaking <laughs> speaking of being overcharged and ridiculous, Abigail Disney uh, oh, is once goodness. again in the news with uh, some opinions. Why don't you tell us about that one? Yeah. So um, so last week when Disney uh, Disney World was closing, um, they had obviously record numbers of people that were there on on the last day, and so there was a tweet from. Uh, WDW News uh, today, I believe, where they had posted, you know, all the crowds that were there. And of course, she went to Twitter and said, are you effing kidding me? Like, that was her response to seeing, you know, all this crowd. Basically, you know, you're supposed to be staying home, social distancing, and here all these people were at the park. So I, I get where she is, but you know what? If people wanted to be you know, and, and do their thing. You can't be mad at, at them, but you know, so she's pissed off that everybody was, was at, you know, her grand grandfather's park, you know? <clears throat> well, and you know, she makes a valid point. Mm -hmm. I certainly can't argue with it. No. Uh, I would have probably made it a little bit more eloquently than she did. <laughs> right, exactly. Like, and she didn't do effing. She said, right, you no, know, the it actually. Was, it was all four words yeah. plus the ing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, four letters. Four letters. Yeah, um, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, she could have done it a little bit more tastefully, uh, mm -hmm. expressing her disappointment. I think she, you come out and, and do something sensationalistic like that, you tend to hurt your, your own credibility when you're making statements like that. Right, right. Um, but again, Disney still did did the, did the right thing as a corporation. They mm -hmm. shut down, right? You know, before they were even ordered to. Right, they shut down beforehand. You know, fortunately, they didn't have. Uh, there were no cases of anything. Now, I think since then there has been one person that has come out 
that was tested positive who had been to Disney World and Universal within a couple of days. So, you know, but as of right now, nobody had had come forward. And the one thing that this article actually talked about that Disney said that it was actually still continue to pay its cast members during this time. So, well, you know, if there's any company in the world that can afford it, it's Oh, Disney. absolutely. And <laughs> and that's the thing is, you know, we even talked about it, you know, briefly is, you know, how much money are they losing per day oh, for being, imagine, yeah. you know, being closed. But, you know, just the theme park itself, not not even, you know, the resorts and things like that. So yeah, I mean, you're losing retail, you're losing hospitality, you're losing theme park yeah it, you're losing it's just transportation yeah, I mean, everything yeah so it, it it's a big hit so for them to still be able but, to you know to again help. under the current conditions when yeah. they did it it was it was fairly unprecedented mm-hmm. nor was it mandated right now it's mandated throughout the state so right. everybody's losing the money now right but, right but disney was responsible enough right. to step they up and it do beforehand. it proactively yeah. so yeah. kudos to them for mm-hmm. that absolutely so one more Disney story. Tell yeah. us what Disney's doing to help us at home. So obviously Disney, you know, ha- had announced um, last week that Frozen was gonna Frozen Two was gonna be coming to Disney Plus earlier, three months earlier. So that was a nice little treat. So now Disney has announced that its latest Pixar movie, Onward, will be getting a dramatically early release for digital download, which actually was today. And is going to be um, available to stream on Disney Plus as of April 3rd. So this is, you know, the, the movie was still in theaters right, when right. theaters were still open. Uh, so the move makes Onward the latest um, in the high profile films to cut short its theatrical run in favor of a digital release. Last weekend, we already saw was the worst box office returns in the past two decades with the entire industry bringing in just over $55 million. Onward actually led the pact with grossing 10.5 million in the U S but it was only a fraction of nearly 50 million that had been made in the first weekend when it was actually available in theaters, when theaters were actually still open um a story that we'll talk about a little bit later is the trend that this isn't the first movie to to do this there right. there's a couple more uh that are that are coming out but this was a, a nice little surprise i wasn't really expecting them to do that but given the state of things and since you know we don't know at this point when things are gonna get back to normal you know, hey, this is something that, you know, again, you got families that are, are you know, have cabin fever. And, you know, if you want to digitally download it, it, you know, it's available um, or, you know, wait till April 3rd and, and watch it on on your Disney Plus. So, you know, for all those people that kept their Disney Plus, you're really getting your money's worth now. Yeah, that's yeah, for sure. that's, that is true. <laughs> so do you do you foresee any other uh theater movies now that are going to be early well, released? Well, that's one of the, the stories in our entertainment section that actually talks about a, a bunch of movies that are, are now, you know, obviously we don't know some of the ones that got pushed out, right. like the James Bond movie, um, Mulan, those they haven't talked about, you know, doing early releases, but there are, you know, some that we'll talk about in, in our uh, two more segments that, are now going to um, on-demand, you know, viewable. So Okay. And I think that does it for... Disney Detective. Disney Detective. We'll mm-hmm. be going to our Star Wars Insights. <gasps> See, I got your sound effect finally. <laughs> and, of course, we had to find at least one story... Because I didn't have anything <laughs> Star Wars related. But then you're like, hey, I got my Star Wars sound effect. So, <laughs> so use it, okay? All right. So the, really the only Star Wars news that, that came out this week, nothing to do with COVID-19 and Yay. all that stuff, is Rosario Dawson is joining the Mandalorian and a as a live action version of Ahsoka Tano. Woo! 
Uh, so, um, so the story came out just uh, yesterday or the day before talking about it. Um, so this actually marks um, kind of a big deal because this is the first time an animated only character has finally been brought to the live action world. Um, so she was actually uh, introduced in the Star Wars universe in 2008 as Anakin Skywalker's Jedi apprentice in the Star Wars spin-off, uh, spin-off uh, Star Wars The Clone Wars. Um, and she did or her voice made an appearance in Rise of Skywalker right. in, you know, the end scene when all of the different uh, Jedis, <coughs> excuse me. The phone were, of friends <coughs> scene when all the right, Jedis the called in. Friend. So her, her voice made an appearance for those that, that knew. So this is actually um, <clears throat> kind of cool that, you know, people are now going to get to see her. And I know one of the things that you mentioned Yesterday was you were kind of surprised like, that they were using her. Yeah, like why wouldn't they bring back <coughs> Ashley Eckstein, who did the voice right. and did the voice? Now, my, my question is, are they going to pull a David Prowse on Rosario Dawson and dub over all of her lines by mm. Ashley Eckstein so she can still do the voice? That would be kind of weird. But the thing is also because of the way that the the character is... You know, you know she's going to be in makeup and things like that. So it's not like well, you're... Is she... I don't know. Because you can digitally do everything at this point in time. Right, right, right. Well, no, I meant in terms of like, you know, it. it's not like you'd see her face more than likely. You'd right. Probably. Absolutely. So, so at that point, why would you use her and use somebody else's voice when well, and that's you what, can't see that it's her? I guess the thing that I'm puzzled about is why was Rosario Dawson picked for this? When mm. Ashley Eckstein is, I mean, unless she wasn't available for it. I mean, that's the only thing I Maybe. could think. Maybe. But like Rosario Dawson really didn't have a connection to that role in the past either. Right, so, right. I don't know. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure the fans are going to love it. Everybody loves Ahsoka. Um, it's, it'll be nice to see the continuation of her story. I had mm -hmm. just finished watching uh, the last season of... Um, uh, well, up to the last episode of the last season of Clone Wars, mm -hmm. and then she shows up again in Rebels, and um, her voice obviously shows up as a spirit, you know, 30-some years later in Rise of Skywalker. Right, right. So her fate is unknown. So when you last see her in Rebels, she is still alive. Mm -hmm. Um, so it'll be kind of interesting to, to sort of put the pieces together because right, Mandalorian right. set, what, five years after Jedi, I think. Right, right. Uh, so it will be interesting to see the character continue her role. Mm hmm So, and that's all we have for Star Wars Insights. Yeah, a little bit of Star Wars, just so you could use your sound effect. Exactly. Uh, we'll come back with entertainment news. Sure. So, fictional hospitals with coronavirus. <laughs> no, that's not it. Oh, no, okay. Uh, TV fictional hospitals are helping oh, okay. real hospitals that are in need. Uh, so, as TV shows are obviously shut down and productions are closed on various seasons, um, or seasons are actually on hiatus because they finish for the year, uh, there are medical dramas such as Fox's The Resident, NBC's New Amsterdam, ABC's The Good Doctor, Grey's Anatomy, and its spinoff uh, Station 19 have decided to donate their surplus medical supplies from the set to real hospitals and locals in need. So this I thought was... But a, are they real supplies, though? No, in some cases they are. Really? Yeah. So uh, so it said, so at Station 19, uh, this was a quote from the show's producer, at Station 19 we were lucky enough to have about 300 of the coveted uh, N95 masks, which were donated, uh, which we donated to a local fire station. They were tremendously grateful. Um, so Station 19 is um, filmed near uh, the city of Ontario, California, and they donated um, a bunch of that. They had some... Um, gowns and gloves that they were able to, to donate as well. Um, in Atlanta, the residents uh, television show, they were able to uh, donate supplies to nearby Grady Hospital, and they had, um, you know, again, various, you know, gowns and gloves and masks and stuff 
um, that they used on the show and, you know, and basically showed up with like two trunkfuls of masks and caps and shoe covers and scrubs and hair covers, lab coats, um, isolation gowns, among yeah. other things. And I would have never thought. Yeah, and, 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 you know, gave them to the local hospital. Um, New Amsterdam, which is one of my insightful picks um, from uh, months ago, um, the showrunner confirmed that the show had donated everything to Bellevue Hospital in New York City, where the show is actually shot. So they actually film it in uh, a local hospital. And basically, once filming shut down, they donated, you know, everything uh, to the hospital. Um, now, one of the show's stars um, who, I guess maybe this week's episode he showed up. I didn't watch this week's. Uh, from Hawaii Five-0, uh, Daniel Day Kim, who portrays a doctor who gets recruited to the new hospital. He actually revealed on Thursday that he had been diagnosed oh boy. Um, after production had, had shut down. Um, so... Fortunately, you know, I don't think it spread to, to anybody else uh, on the cast or on the crew. But basically they said, you know, everything that we were able, um, you know, that we had in, in storage from, you know, uh, costumes and props and things like that. Basically, you know, we've been able to, you know, anything that they could use, you know, we gave to them. Um, and then The Good Doctor, which is based in Vancouver, they were able to pull all of their stock to help uh, local uh, Canadian government distribute, you know, where needed. So I thought that was uh, another, you know, feel good, you know, here's your fake doctors that were able to, to help real doctors and, you know, um, you know, and people that, that are desperately in need for things. You're, you're seeing it all over <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, social media right now, various people say, oh, I have, you know, this one that works in the medical field and this one. If you have any, you know, extra supplies, please let me know and, you know, so that we can get it to them, um, you know. That is kind of cool. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I'd be honest with you, I'm, I'm much happier seeing the uh, fictional hospitals donate their supplies mm -hmm. than seeing, like, The Walking Dead. <laughs> Donate their zombie <laughs> apocalypse supplies. I don't know. We're kind of getting uh, to the point where we might need some of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's we might need the crossbow. That, that's, Daryl, come yeah, help. That's kind of my point. Is like you know, the squirrels in the backyard. We're, Thankfully, we're not at that stage. The, the squirrels are safe. They're although they're okay. I will say we are kind of set in our area if it does come to that because we do have wild turkeys. So we'll yes, be we do well. actually have wild turkeys right down our street. Yeah. We just got to figure out how to catch them. We will. Uh, <laughs> we will be in better shape than <laughs> than our some neighbor. Yeah. Neighborhood city dwellers. Right, right. <laughs> so, so tell us about Katy Perry. So this was actually a story that we had talked about months ago. Uh, so it, uh, she was being sued along with uh, her um, record producer. Uh, if you remember, uh, there was a joyful noise um, was came out and, and said that their song... Uh, she had sampled their her their song um in um dark horse in her 2013 hit um well it seems the judge threw that out they um so it was a 2.8 million dollar um verdict and the judge said nope song is different they had a musicologist come in and you know and and go through the the joyful noise song and go through dark ha horse and said while there were some similarities it wasn't the same song so a nope, musicologist sorry. i know i, what, I thought that what, was, what is a musicologist i don't know his name is todd decker <laughs> He's a musicologist. Okay. Uh, yeah, he analyzed the song and, you know, the elements, but, you know, they included pitch sequences and temporal spacing, but basically two different songs. So okay. good for Katie. Well, apparently he's certainly a subject matter expert and I'm not, so <laughs> exactly. he can call himself whatever he wants. Exactly. Uh, one more, because we haven't had enough, but one more coronavirus-related story well, here. Well, this is kind of what I, when we were talking about uh, Pixar and Onward, right. having its uh, changing from theatrical to 
digital download and uh, streaming. So now uh, Universal is dropping some of their movies to be on demand. So obviously with everything that's been going on, various movies have been pushed out to the fall now. Like we said, uh, Mulan, Quiet Place 2, right now they have you know, to be determined dates. Um, but during the week, NBC universal announced that they would be releasing their titles through home entertainment for the first time. Uh, trolls world tour, which was originally supposed to debut in theaters on April 17th will now be released on demand on April 10th. Um, and that's not the only one. So according to NBC Universal's movies that we're currently playing in theaters will also be moved to on demand as well. Uh, some were as coming uh, as soon as Friday. Uh, so that included uh, The Invisible Man, um, Jane Austen's Emma, and the much debated thriller The Hunt, which was actually supposed to come out on Friday the 13th. Um, you know, so what does that mean for the future of, of theater? So, that means don't release your movies on Friday the 13th. <laughs> don't release your movies on Friday, unless it's about Friday the 13th. Um, Jeff uh, Shell, who is the CEO of NBC Universal, said in a statement, we hope and we believe that people will still go to the movies in theaters when available, and we understand that for people in different areas of the world that this is increasingly becoming less possible. Um, you know, we kind of talked about this we touched on this when we were talking about, you know, the Oscars and how there were, you know, m movies that were up for Oscars that were on Netflix right. that people could see much easier than their local theater or they don't live near a theater. Um, Which offended some of the <coughs> key members in Hollywood. Oh, absolutely. So it become you know, it, it, it does become that whole, is this a trend now? going to be ongoing or is this just a temporary thing you know i think i think the biggest thing i know there's been again memes galore about everything and it's like you know once we're allowed to go back out in public and once it's safe again you know the the concert halls will you know the the stadiums will be full to the brim everybody's gonna want to get out the movie theaters are going to be full everybody's going to want that human interaction again right. so I could see this being a nice temporary fix, but in some areas, you know, well, of the country know, where you can't get to a theater easily. The one thing that I think you will see is that a lot of industries are going to discover that they have a different business model now. Mm -hmm. That, yep. you know, you can make X <clears> amount <throat> of dollars releasing a movie in a theater. Right. And you can really, you can earn Y amount of dollars by mm -hmm. releasing it to people who wouldn't be able to get to the theater, but you'd still be able to get their money. Right, right. And and that's the thing is, you know, and obviously I personally don't know how much it is to rent on demand anymore. I can't remember the last time we did an on demand movie. I'm guessing it's a heck of a lot cheaper than three or four of us going to the movie theater. Right. Um, you know, so obviously, but, you know, and the thing is, there are movies mm -hmm. that can be very easily watched at home. Mm -hmm. There are movies that need to be seen in the theater. Absolutely. Star Wars, as much as <clears throat> I've been down on the last couple of Star Wars movies, they need to be seen in a movie theater to be mm -hmm. appreciated. And I'm not talking IMAX or 3D or any of that right, crazy stuff. Right, 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 right. But there's just <clears throat> movies that are made to be a cinematic experience. Mm -hmm. Your rom coms and stuff like that, they can easily be watched at home. I mean, they're they're Hallmark quality movies, right. in my opinion. Right. But when you go to see a blockbuster movie, you need to see it in a movie theater. Oh, and and I could definitely see how <clears throat> it's like for us if there's a big theatrical release of something. Yes, we're gonna go and see it in the theater. Whereas you know something where. You know, and, and here's another thing, too. There are times when there are movies that come out that I'm the only one that wants to go and see it. Right. And I don't feel like going to the movie theater, <clears throat> excuse me, by myself or I, you know, don't have anybody else that wants to go with me. So being able to, oh, you know, let me just watch it on demand. Boom. Right. Exactly. You know, so you have that, you know, and it that fits. too. And like, so. for something like that, you'd be more inclined to go s to see it on demand. Mm-hmm. You don't want to go see it in a the theater because you don't want that 
you know, solo experience or right, no, right. So they're not going to get your money, right? But if they release it mm-hmm. on demand in that same time frame, right? They'll get you. So th- also there's that on niche. demand of whenever I want to watch it. So right. if I, you know, oh, I could watch it at eight o'clock in the morning, but the movie theater doesn't open till you know till twelve. Or, oh, well, you know, I can start watching it, go make dinner and come back and, you and know, finish, finish it. watching right, it. Right, right. You know, there's that so there, convenience. Yeah, so I, I definitely see there's that, okay, so where do we go moving forward? You know, things have changed, you know. Yeah. I, and how I think do we what's going to happen is once things go back to normal, and they will, right. the world will continue to spin on, humanity will continue to survive, and movies will get released back into the theaters again and everyone mm-hmm. will go back to real life. Right. But I think once that happens... A lot of these places are going to find different outlets and different ways mm-hmm. to to tweak a little bit more money. About, mm-hmm. And they're going to have to. Right. Because the amount of money that's being lost at this point in time is oh, astronomical. Yeah. Absolutely. And that and that's the thing is, okay, so if we go to the movie and $40, $30 for us to go to the movie versus, you know, the company's not getting that $30 from us. But, hey, we release it on demand for $10. At least I'm making $10. Right. You know, so so right. there's that where at least, you know, they're not making as much money as they would have. Or in some cases, maybe they are because maybe there's that person that, uh, I really didn't want to see this movie in theater. Uh, I got nothing else to watch. I've been watched everything else on Netflix and <laughs> Amazon right. Prime. I want something new and different. We'll see. All right, and I'll spend the ten bucks to, that's the thing. to get also, it on Also, is that so much has been moved into a streaming environment mm-hmm. that it's second nature for people to stream right. things. So whether mm-hmm. I'm streaming yeah. it on Netflix or Amazon or I don't think anybody streams anything on Apple TV at this point. <laughs> um, but if I'm streaming everything right. else that I watch, it's nothing for me to, right, to, to buy just a video add on another. demand. Right. It, it's, exactly. it's, it's simple. Mm-hmm. So. so that was all we had for our entertainment news. Mm-hmm. We will come back with our insightful picks of the week. Mm-hmm. for your insightful pick. So, speaking of streaming stuff on Amazon Prime, <laughs> uh, so this was a show that I've been seeing, um, you know, previews for and, and whatnot, and we kind of ran out of things that we watched together, and I was like, oh, come on, honey, let's let's watch this. And you're like, eh, I don't know. I'm like, eh, let's watch it. And so, and you actually enjoyed it. I did. And that would be Hunters uh, that is on Amazon Prime. Um, so the series, which actually is inspired by a number of real Nazi hunters throughout the decades, but is not meant to be a specific representation of any of them um, basically follows a diverse band of Nazi hunters living in 1977 New York city who discover that the Nazi war criminals are conspiring to create a fourth Reich in the U S very interesting filming style, kind of guy, Richie um, noir filming style. Um, I believe Jordan Peele is actually one of the producers mm-hmm. uh, of the show. Um, very interesting cast. You have, you know, um, uh, Al Pacino. Um, Which it's always nice to see Pacino in something. It's not a traditional <laughs> mafia movie. Right. He's he's this, you know, old uh, survivor, you know, Jewish survivor of the Holocaust. Um, you know, the story follows this 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 teenage kid um who who lives with his grandmother um and then you know there's all these different little clips you you have this um fbi agent um who who's a a black woman who has this like foxy brown you know kind of jive to her and and stuff so you 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 meet her and you're kind of like okay where does she fit in with this and you have all these little like backstories and of course you know by the end of it you find out you know, it's almost like a band of superheroes. I right. guess was kind of how the yeah. I mean, that's the, what it is. It's the, you know, the I mean, Jewish Justice League. Yeah, it was the, really the Jewish Justice League. Um, but very, um, it, it's it's a hard subject matter. It it is definitely um, graphic. Um, the, they don't hide uh, anything. Um, 
but it was definitely a, a good storyline. Um, there's ten episodes in the the series. Uh, we've only watched the first one, right? Um, and it was definitely one where, like, after the first one, I kind of needed to take a couple days break. Like, it wasn't something I personally could binge just because of the the subject matter. But it was definitely nice to to see the the Nazi says the bad guy, and, yeah. and you know, and and you know, the different ways that they you know are going around and finding them and and hunting and that you know they're they're getting their revenge so you know definitely you know a a good show if you're you know if you can handle the subject matter right you know there is some harsh language and i Mm -hmm. don't mean vulgarity i mean a lot of hate speech that comes through Mm -hmm. Uh, it is set in the 70s so Mm -hmm. it's using that motif to kind of couch some of the yeah. Otherwise, uh, politically incorrect uh, terminology mm-hmm. and, and attitudes. Yeah. Uh, but it captures, I think, the authenticity very well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, good pick. Thank you. I have sensed a disturbance in the force. Ominous words under any circumstances, but all the more so when uttered by Emperor Palpatine. On Batu, at the edges of the unknown regions, a threat to the Empire is taking root. Its existence little more than a glimmer, its consequences as yet unknowable. But it is troubling enough to the Imperial leader to warrant investigation by his most powerful agents. Ruthless enforcer Lord Darth Vader and brilliant strategist Grand Admiral Thrawn, fierce rivals for the Emperor's favor and outspoken adversaries on Imperial affairs, including the Death Star Project. The formidable pair seem unlikely partners for such a crucial mission, but the Emperor knows it is not the first time Lord Vader and Thrawn have joined forces. And there's more behind his royal command than either man suspects. So my pick this week is a Star Wars novel, in case anyone didn't know. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Was that what it was? This is from (laughs) one of my absolute favorite authors, Timothy Mm -hmm. Zahn. Uh, He wrote the original Thrawn trilogy that was part of the Expanded Universe and was retconned out, and now they're bringing it back in. Uh, This is the second novel in the new Thrawn series, and it's absolutely brilliant. It's really two novels in one. Uh, He does a fantastic job of relating two stories in parallel from two different time periods, Uh, One that's set during the Clone Wars uh, between Anakin Skywalker and Thrawn, Mithral Nurodo at the time, who hasn't joined the Empire yet. And then one decades later, or a decade or so later, when uh, Darth Vader is now, you know, Anakin Skywalker has become Darth Vader. Uh, Thrawn has risen through the ranks. Uh, being the outsider alien that he was. And he is a Grand Admiral in a fleet, and both are right-hand men of Emperor Palpatine. Um, They work in conjunction together. um, And all the while, Darth Vader is trying to pretend that he's not Anakin Skywalker, and Thrawn's already figured it out. Um, The synergy between the characters is, is fantastic. The secondary characters that they have in there are great. Um, the novel itself is just a masterwork, uh, just like anything that Timothy Zahn seems to do. Um, it was a great read. I was, I was literally on the edge of my seat every time Mm -hmm. I picked this thing up and, uh, I would highly recommend it. Um, I think this was actually better than the last Thrawn novel that he did, which was sort of an origin story to get Thrawn into the canon. Mm-hmm. Um, now with Thrawn as an established individual, it was it was much more powerful and sort of picked up in the in the spirit of what the original Thrawn trilogy was back in the nineties. Uh, so this is Thrawn Alliances, <coughs> a novel by Timothy Zahn, available on Amazon Kindle 
paperback and hardcover where books are sold. And he's the one that has the little kitty on his shoulder. It's not a he, kitty. He but... does, but not yet. Oh, yeah, he okay. doesn't he have doesn't, it yet. He doesn't have a kitty yet. Okay. Right. So <laughs> that was it for my pick. Very good pick. Uh, <coughs> did we have anything else that we wanted to talk about? One little thing. Just a, I, I was going to try and do a little montage or whatever, but, you know. Um, today happens to be a special occasion for us. It is. It is. What is it? So, 16 years ago today. In a galaxy far, far away. Far away. We went on our first date. Wow. So, today is our date anniversary. Wow. 16 and, years. And for the record, by the terms of our marriage... I was not required to remember that. Right. Uh, because I was only required to remember our wedding, wedding anniversary, anniversary. Which I made kind of easy for you. I made easy for you because I let you pick the day. You picked your favorite holiday, which is... Halloween. So I always remember what our anniversary is. Right. So I am off the hook for not remembering this, but thank you, dear, for remembering it for us. Not a problem. So that is all we had. Do you want to give our contact information? Sure, let's do it. You can see us streaming on Twitch at least five days a week. We are at twitch.tv slash insights into things. Our email is comments at insights into things dot com. You can catch us on the Twitter at insights underscore things. On YouTube at youtube dot com backslash insights into things. You can get our website at www.insightsintothings.com. Our audio versions of the podcast at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. And you can catch us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. And that's it. That is it, everyone. We are done. Stay safe out there. Yes. Wash your damn hands. <laughs> Wash your hands. Hand sanitizer. Don't and, cough. <laughs> and we'll talk to everyone next week. Have a good one, everyone.